afternoon in Project M, including the ones that I wrote. A lot of it is writing our own game code and injecting it in. So that's pretty much what I'll be demonstrating next. Um, I'm just going to take a couple minutes break because I need to get like a glass of water or something. <laughs> so if anyone has like questions or anything like that, now would be a good time to uh, post them in chat. By the way, thanks everyone for uh, joining in this stream. We have about 71 viewers right now, uh, which is phenomenal. Um, and if you like this sort of thing, then you can show your support by uh, clicking the follow button and following the stream. Um, if if this sort of thing gets you know popular enough, then I could do more of these in the future, possibly with some more uh, advanced coding stuff, um, or maybe different fields of interest, such as you know modifying different game files depending on the game. Um, or even showing you how I write, um, you know, some codes for Project M. I plan on, uh, at some point anyway, releasing some of the codes that I wrote for Project M. Um, and I have everything very well documented and commented, so for anyone who uh, is interested in this stuff, you could check those out and, like, and really understand, like, what the code does and how it works. Uh, the other thing is, I'm going to be streaming uh, Melee and Project M during Apex, which is uh, a Smash tournament coming up next week. It is the world's largest Smash tournament, and I will be housing about 45 people for this event, um, and that includes some of the top players in the world, including uh, Armada, uh, Dr. PP, and uh, Mango for a little bit as well. And uh, Hungry Mo Hungrybox might stop by because my friend is housing him. So if you're interested in uh, watching them, you know, play some casuals at my apartment, um, maybe Arma Armada's probably going to play some Project M. He, I think he really loves the game. He likes using Pit. Um, so if you're interested in that, then you can definitely follow um, and check that out when the time comes. Somebody asked about uh, the memory address or the the value c c c c c c c c. Uh, you see that a lot in like Brawl and and probably other Wii games as well. Um, especially in like the higher address memories. Um, we've worked in we've worked in like eight zero addresses so far eight zero eight one. Um, the Wii has more memory than the GameCube and has like nine zero nine one addresses as well. Um, and I'm I'm pretty sure, um, I'm pretty sure that the game writes all those C's um, to indicate that that memory is actually free memory and is not being used for anything. Um, and when a file or something is written to to memory in that location, it will it, it writes over those C's and puts you know the actual data there. I think it does that because writing something like all zeros is not very telling because you could write a file that has a bunch of zeros in the file and it could be very confusing so when the game is trying to negotiate like what memory is free and what memory isn't free um, 
and uh, I'm kind of just guessing, <laughs> by the way, right now. I don't know this for certain, but I think that using C's is um, a, a, a more telling way of figuring out like what memory is free and what memory is being being used. So I think I'm ready to move on. Uh, this is where things get very interesting because we're actually going to be going through the game's code. And we're going to look at some some very, very confusing lines of machine code. And we're going to try and figure out what they do. Working with machine code or assembly, which is essentially like human readable machine code, is very, very tedious because it's not written by programmers most of the time. Like, the programmers write in, like, C or C++ or, you know, with comments and with variables and with, with like, functions that you can see the names of and, like, go through. Well, all of that gets compiled into machine code, and we don't have any of that. The variables don't have names. In fact, there aren't really even any variables. There's no such thing as, like, like a for loop or an if statement or like calling a function like that stuff sort of exists but in ways that are very like organic and and much more confusing to look at in uh like in in assembly code um so uh as i mentioned assembly is basically human readable machine code um for every line of assembly there is a corresponding line of machine code and an assembly instruction is basically a you're like directly talking to the processor and telling the processor exactly what to do. You know, take this value and write it to this memory address. You know, read this memory address and put it into this register. Add a value to this register. Move registers around. It can do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, it has some basic like conditional like if statements. You know, if this is greater than zero, then branch to this this line of code. Um, overall, though, it's it's a huge mess and kind of a pain to work with. Um, here I have some uh, examples of assembly instructions and their corresponding machine code. Uh, the machine code is in hex, which is binary, of course, just in more readable form. Um, and so, like, we are quite literally, by writing assembly, just talking directly to the processor. So, uh, I have a few examples here, and I'll explain what they mean. The first one is li. Oh, and by the way, I should specify that these instructions right here are specific to PowerPC and the GameCube and Wii. Different processors have their own instruction sets and probably have their own acronyms as well, their own like numbers of registers and their own just way of manipulating data in general. So while you will learn a lot from this, and the general knowledge definitely applies to other areas, um, these specific commands um, only apply to either PowerPC or the GameCube and Wii specifically. Um, so anyway, uh, the the first uh, instruction I have here is LI. LI stands for load immediate. You're essentially just taking a value and loading it into a register. Um, and actually, I, I think I mentioned this before, but um, registers are essentially slots of memory that the processor has built in. So instead of relying on just like the game memory or like the system memory for values, which can be very, they're much slower to access, the processor has a few like memory slots built in where you can temporarily store values. Um, I can show that real quick in, in Dolphin, I guess. Um, these are what the registers look like. Um, again, different processors have different kinds of registers, but here we have R0, R1, R2, uh, all the way down to R31. And then there are some special purposes registers, like the link register, the control register. Uh, those are used for like different, different processor functions. I'll talk about a couple of them. And then here we have some floating point registers as well, which are used for manipulating decimal values um, in the processor. So when I talk about like moving values to registers, I'm talking about these little pockets of memory we can like load values into, manipulate, and then store them into like the game's memory. Uh, so anyway, 
So the the, the first uh, instruction is li space r3 comma two. Uh, like I said, it stands for load immediate. And what this does in particular, or this specific one, is it loads the value 2 into register 3. Very simple. Um, and then if you look at the machine code, it makes no sense, like, with regard to what the assembly actually is. So you really don't need to memorize, like, these machine code instructions, um, especially since we have a tool, um, which I mentioned before, called ASM Weird which translates these assembly functions into machine code. So anyway, uh, the next instruction I have on here is MR, which is move register. Uh, this one is MR R4 R26. Um, and that takes register 26 and copies its value over to register 4. Um, generally, in, in this, uh, in PowerPC assembly, the first register that you specify is the one that's getting affected. So in this case, register 3 is getting affected. In this case, register 4 is getting affected. So we're copying the value in its move register, but we're copying it. We're copying the value from R26 over to R4. The next one is add, which is add. Very simple. Uh, again, the first value, R3, we are affecting register 3 here. So we are taking the values in R4 and R5, we are adding them together, and storing the result in register 3. And so that's an example of an add instruction. The next one I have here is CMPWI. That stands for Compare Word Immediate. Um, just to remind you, a word is a piece of data that's four bytes long, so there's a byte which is one byte, of course, and then there's a word, which is four bytes. Um, PowerPC, or at least this particular processor, works with words most of the time. So what this does is this compares the value at register 3 to 2. Um, generally, when you see the I, which is immediate, you specify like an actual value yourself. Like up here, load immediate, we're specifying 2. Here, compare word immediate, we're comparing the value in R3 to 2. Um, this doesn't do any, like, it doesn't, like, you might ask, like, what is it comparing it to? You know, is it equal? Is it not equal? Is it greater than? Like, well, that's actually not specified, like, until the next instruction, usually. Um, when you compare values, there's a special register that's, like, the compare, reg like, the state register, I forget what it's called, but it stores, like, it stores the result of this comparison. So when we compare register 3 to 2, it will store like greater than, less than, equal to, that sort of thing. And so uh, this next instruction that I'm going over is BEQ, which says branch if equal. Um, branching just means moving to a different area of code. In this case, um, ass assuming it's after this compare instruction, we're saying if register 3 is equal to 2, then we are branching to this area of code. This is saying branch this many lines forward. Um, every line is 4 bytes long, so this would be jumping 13 lines forward. Um, this is in hex, by the way. So 3, 4 is not 34, it's uh, like 52. The 0x specifies hex. Uh, so, I hope this makes sense so far. Uh, what do you mean by branch predictor? Oh, right. I didn't include those, actually. Um, you can put a plus or a minus after the branch function to make the code execute a little bit faster. If you know which case is usually going to be hit, like, if you know most of the time it's equal, then you can put, like, a plus there. And if you know most of the time it won't be equal, you can put a minus there. It makes the code execution a little bit faster. Um... Yeah, but, but anyway, um, to clear another thing up, 
um, when I say branch if equal, it's saying like if, well in this case, if register 3 is equal to 2, we're going to branch to another section of 